What's up guys, welcome to the first in a series of cheat engine guides I'll be making to teach you everything I know about making cheats for emulators. I've been lucky enough to have a great mentor to kind of guide me and answer all the many questions I've had about making cheats and cheat engine for emulators. So now I want to do that for you guys. My goal is to demystify making cheats and cheat engine because it's really not as difficult as it may seem. The techniques and principles you'll learn here can be applied to any emulated game and PC games as well. For those of you that know me and those of you that are active on my Discord, you know that I'm always happy and willing to share um, whatever I know about making cheats and cheat engine. We all start somewhere. so. Teaching each other what we know about Cheat Engine can help us all grow and help us all improve. Personally speaking, explaining some of the concepts I've learned to you guys helps to sort of reinforce my own knowledge too. Trust me when I tell you that if I can do it, you definitely can do it. I tried to keep the absolute beginner in mind when making this guide, so in this first video, I'm going to be going into a lot of detail about even the small things, just so you can kind of get a basis. So while you're following along, please let me know in the comments if I didn't explain something in as much detail as I should have, or if I made assumptions that I shouldn't have. All right, let's go. Guess who's back? Back again. Yeah. All right, let's begin. You've downloaded Cheat Engine and now have your game and Cheat Engine running. Before we can begin searching or using any cheats in Cheat Engine, the first thing we'll need to do is tell Cheat Engine which game we want to target. Because our game is being run through an emulator, we'll attach Cheat Engine to the emulator. In this case, it's Simu, but if you're searching for values within a different video game emulator, you just attach it to whichever emulator you're using. To attach it to your game, just click this little PC icon in the upper left of Cheat Engine, select your emulator, and click Open. Next, we'll begin using Cheat Engine Scanner to search for our health address. Before we can start our first scan, we'll need to add the ability to scan using big Indian value types. Cheat Engine's default value type is Little Indian, but since many consoles use Big Indian value types such as Xbox 360, PS3, and in our case Wii U, we'll need to add the Big Indian value type capability to Cheat Engine. I will link my quick and easy tutorial for adding these up above and in the description. You'll need to add them before continuing. In most, if not all, Zelda games such as Zelda Ocarina of Time, Skyward Sword, Link's Awakening, and Breath of the Wild, we know that one heart has four quarters, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll, we'll assume we don't know that, because in most cases we won't know. For this search, we'll be using a 4-byte Big Indian scan. In most games, this is how we'll begin our searches, but as you gain more experience with searching, you'll start to identify when to use a 4-byte search versus a float. For example, if we had a normal health bar with no indication as to its value, we might want to use a float value type. But here, since we can see the various parts of our health, we'll go ahead and begin with 4 byte. You can arrive at the same answer using either method, but the return addresses may be misleading if we're not viewing them using the right type. That brings us to scan type. Like I said above, since we don't know the actual value of our health, we'll begin our search with the scan type unknown initial value. Okay, let's begin our search. On our first scan, we should expect to get a ton of results. Our address will be in the list somewhere, but to get to it, we'll need to continue our search. So we'll need to change our health value by gaining or losing some health. I'll go ahead and hurt Link to lower our health. Now we'll continue scanning using the next scan button, but this time we'll use decreased value, since that's exactly what we did. We decreased our health value. This time we got much fewer results, but there are still too many. So we'll repeat the process get hurt and search decreased value. Now we'll mix it up by not changing our health and searching unchanged. We can just click next scan a few times since our health is not changing. Any red values in the result list means the values are changing on their own. So they're obviously not the health value adjust we're after. Doing several unchanged scans will help to weed those out. We can do any combination of decreased value, unchanged, or if we ate some food that replenished our health, we could even do increased value. We'll continue searching until we have just a few results. Thank you. 
Okay, now we have a manageable list of values to try. We'll go ahead and add all of these and begin testing. These lower values look reasonable. We'll activate them, which freezes the value, and see how our health behaves when we take damage. Okay, see the way our health value is flashing? That means it still wants to change, but we're stopping it. This usually means this isn't our actual health value because if it was, it would just stick. So we can continue activating, deactivating these uh, to see which ones do stick. Another thing we can try is manually changing the value to see if we can control our health. Okay, that one affected our value. This might be it, but we'll continue testing to be sure. Let's activate it and see if we can lock our health in place. Alright, our health value didn't move. Let's try changing it one more time. Okay, I'm pretty confident this is the one. Now let's remove the clutter from our list. So just the address we want remains. Any address we find in memory will be dynamic, which means it will be different the next time we load the game. So we need to find the actual instruction that assigns this address to its value. To do that, we'll right click this address and select find out what writes to this address. You'll see this message about attaching the debugger. Just click yes, it's normal. This will open a window that will monitor our dynamic address to trace what writes to it when our health changes. Here we see we've already got a hit. But we haven't taken any damage yet, so this probably isn't the instruction we want. Let's try Hurting Link again and see if it finds anything. Okay, found another instruction. This is probably the one we want, but let's test it. So we'll highlight the address and click Show Disassembler. This brings us to the actual instruction that controls our health. It's like the god of our health. Unfortunately for this instruction, we're here to overthrow it and remove its control over us. Let's right click and select replace with code that does nothing. This completely disables the instruction so it's no longer watching over our health address. Permanently AFK. Okay, let's deactivate or unfreeze our value and see if this did the trick. Alright, our value didn't move. Let's roll this back real quick so you can see what exactly we did. This instruction has seven bytes. Each set of two characters is one byte. So what this does is replace each byte with a 90. A 90, aka a NOP, means do nothing. So let's return it to normal and move on to the final part of creating our cheat. Since this instruction will never change, we need a little script that will find it for us and NOP it whenever we want. I've got a little template for you that I use myself to make this quick and painless. The first thing we'll want to do is highlight a few lines here and copy the bytes. To do this, we'll right click the highlighted lines, highlight copy to clipboard, then select bytes only, no address. This is known as an AOB, aka an array of bytes. This will act as a unique series of bytes we can use to always find this instruction for us. We can select any amount of bytes we need to. What's important is that it's unique. To test its uniqueness, we'll do a new scan, an array of bytes scan. When we select the array of bytes scan, the hex boxes automatically check for us. These bytes are hexadecimal, which is a series of characters 0 through F, so we definitely need hex checked. What we're hoping for is a single result returned. There we go. This means the combination of bytes we selected is unique and will always point us to this instruction. If we did get more than one result, we'd just highlight another line, copy the bytes, and scan for it. We'd repeat the process until we got only a single result. However, in our case, three lines did the trick. As you can see, the address it found matches the address of our target instruction. That brings us to our script. I'll make this cheat table template available on my Discord, and I'll also include the script in the description. You can either open the cheat table file and edit the script, or paste in the script by hitting Ctrl-Alt-A on your keyboard. When you create a new script, you won't see OK at the bottom, but rather Execute. Clicking Execute will only run the script with no options to disable, so instead we'll go to File, then Add to Current Cheat Table. OK, these bytes represent what we're scanning for. We'll replace the bytes in this template with the ones we just found. This section of the script performs an array of bytes scan for these unique bytes. 
Now we'll copy just the bytes of the instruction itself and place those in the disable section. This returns the bytes to normal once we disable the cheat. Here we want an equal number of knops as there are bytes in the instruction. Any more or any less and we'll likely just crash the game when we try to enable. That's all there is to it. Now just click OK. But again, if OK is not available, click File and add this to the cheat list. OK, the moment of truth. Let's test before just to show Link's health behaving normally. Now let's enable the cheat and see if it worked. All right, looks like we did it. I want to show you what this cheat is doing when we enable it. I know for me, having some context really helps new concepts to stick. Okay, now watch what happens when we enable the cheat. It knopped our instructions and changed the address to health. Why? As we discussed earlier, this array of bytes, or AOB, is a unique set of bytes that will always lead us to this instruction. This is our injection point, which is why I prefixed the name with INJ. Once it found the instruction, it replaced 7 bytes, the length of our instruction, with 90, which means do nothing. You'll see 7 knobs here, and our script gave our address the name health, but you can change these names to anything you want as long as the script follows this basic format. As you can see, disabling it returns everything to normal. And you just made your first cheat. Hackerman. I hope you've enjoyed this little guide on how to find your health in emulated games. Of course, this is just one method for trying to find and script a cheat for health. There are definitely other scenarios you'll run into, but this is probably the most common. More tutorials are on the way around using Cheat Engine for emulators. If you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that what I'm making is helpful to people. So if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified anytime I release something new. All right, guys, thanks for watching.